Hey guys, you're listening to Vol as usual. I'm going to focus on another battle report for today. Again, Yu Ching against Pen Oceana. As you know, my most uh, common practice opponent plays Pen Oceana, so most of my games do feature Pano, and of course, Yu Ching being my main faction, it's uh, another rerun. But we are playing a mission that um, I haven't experienced before, and that is Cold Sleep. So you may have played it, it's uh, an ITS mission. And um, I just bring up this little diagram jog your memory a little bit. There are two consoles throughout the center line with two tech coffins and the scoring is done at the end of the game. So it says here have more connected consoles than the adversary at the end of the game. That's two points. So if you have one of these green middle consoles and they don't or if you have both of them uh, you get two points. That is one very straightforward way to win. You also get more you get three objective points if you have a controlled console, which means you've actually got a guy sitting next to at the end of the game. So that's the bulk of the points, the lion's share of the points. Um, but Intelcom is active in this mission, so if you've only got one specialist standing next to an objective, they can Intelcom that guy off it. Uh, so to win this, going second really helps because you can move on to one of the consoles, connect it, even if the other guy's got the other one, you have maybe two specialists in base-to-base -base contact with it and you end up getting three points out of that. And uh, for them to have three tech coffins, which are the uh, purple ones, that actually have to do a lot of work to get all of those. So tech coffins I feel are more the tiebreaker side of it. So you don't have to go second to win this scenario, but it really helps. By the way, you get plus three for having a doctor. Um, for this mission, I'm running um, this list here. And I'm not too sure if you'll be able to see that on YouTube. I'll, I'll make this as large as possible. I wonder if this will actually be enough to see everything. So that is the list. Uh, we've got a uh, Sien Warrior. We've got a Guilung Ford Observer, as usual. I think I'm going to have to zoom out, actually. Here we are here. So, CN Warrior with HMG, Guilung Ford Observer, Celestial Guard with all the Quangxi, uh, Zanji Lieutenant, uh, Sensor Bot, so Pulse, uh, Flash Pulse Bot, the Tiger Soldier with Spitfire. I always prefer this, the Tiger Soldier with Spitfire because um, if you're going and spinning all that orders on and making a suicide run to, to kill cheerleaders, you want the higher burst, the higher damage, um, the decent range band. You don't need to be a heavy machine gun. Uh, I find the combi rifle just lets them off too lightly. With the combi rifle, yes, it's better at 0 to 8, but with only 3 dice and damage 13, sometimes they will survive either beating you in the face-to-face -face roll or passing the armor save, and you just don't want that. So the Tiger Soldier is more likely to get more kills. That's why you really need to invest in the special weapons points. And since he's going to be your man for like one a whole turn using all of your orders if possible, you want him to have a, you know, a decent gun. Obviously the Ninja with Tactical Bow, uh, an automatic conclude. Uh, the Doctor is fine, the Helper Bot. Kaisotsu Ford Observer is not really the usual choice here, but at 10 points they are a cheerleader as well as a specialist, so... If they don't, I mean, they're your backup. If you lose the Guilung and the Ninja and the Doctor, then you've at least got some way of completing um, the scenario. Shaolin Monks, of course, for the smoke and skirmishing ability against the Hsien, but the really um, unusual choice that I've made in this list is to try out the, the, the Yan Huo with the missile launchers. I might make a video soon just covering what the thoughts are behind this profile. I don't really like the Yan Huo in general. Uh, the HRMC is very, very popular. In fact, I think we're just going to have to move this a little bit. Yeah, I've got the I've got the the camera facing the wrong spot. So most people like the hyper rapid magnetic cannon just for the offensive potential. There's also the missile launchers with neurocinetics where you can fire twice in your reactive turn but not twice in your active turn. So I've just chosen the plain old two missile launchers for a two dice active turn for this particular list. And like I said, um, there are various reasons why, but I think I'll cover that in a different video. So let's just try and get straight into the game. Uh, Alright, so here's the table. I'll see if I can find a picture of, uh, of showing the majority of it. So this is the majority of it here. I'm going to make my camera a lot smaller now. It's way up in the corner here. You can still see me talking. So uh, we had a pretty big talk about this before the game started. 
what we're trying to do at the moment is trying to make the table like non-symmetrical so we want to have one deployment zone more appealing than the other so that the lieutenant role matters more so that choosing table side is very appealing and not just going second for example so uh, this is the uh, I managed to win the role and I did pick the table side uh, and the part of the reason I've done that is because I've got enough stuff in the list to win if I go first I've got I've got infiltrators I've got the tiger soldier so um, going first is okay for me because I think I can cripple them in terms of attrition but if he takes first turn then I've given the second turn I've just got to defend and with the better table side that should be easy to do and the scenario should be easier to complete so that is the, that is the thinking behind it but on this table uh, I'm able to deploy my troops up until about this line here so I've got one celestial guard control device on this building but only barely and then this is the staircase so I can deploy onto that and then these big buildings have a pretty good view of, of a lot of a lot of his side of the table we'll just skip back though um, I have deployed in fact let's just find the right picture so I've uh, hidden deployed a ninja right next to this uh, objective here on my left hand side this is one of the what do we call this tech coffins so this is the uh, the purple tech coffin here the way it's arranged uh, there's another tech coffin on the phone over here and um, although not pictured behind this red crate is the actual console uh, his table side uh, deliberately we've given him a table side which doesn't feature that much uh, terrain for deploying behind but still enough still plentiful he's got a bulleteer here uh, inconsequential HVT because we've excuse me we've both gone for Intel com and his, his, he's got a couple of um, auxilia bots and things like that we'll point things out later so on my side of the table I've, uh, I've put down my Yanhuo as a reserve trooper and the reason why I've used it as a reserve trooper is that it's actually well it's an expensive trooper and I want to get the right right fire lanes for it but he's used a Montessa knight with a light grenade launcher so this is the the uh, the knight in Penoshana which has mechanized deployment allowing him to deploy straight up and his plan was to use speculative fire with his uh, grenade launcher to try and take out my cheerleaders or my lieutenant so in his first turn he can move forward with the the Montessa but the Yan Ho would shoot at him straight away with the missile launcher needing a 17 because of 14 plus the good range band and with just a combi rifle he'd really be uh, in a lot of trouble there if he if he just starts that way so I've deployed using an ARO piece per se but uh, in, in a cleverer way because I've actually put him in a spot where he can only attack me initially with one guy so here he is here the Montessa Knight um, was really looking forward to seeing how this goes actually I've been playing up against um, grenade launchers a fair bit lately and I have had a little bit of trouble so uh, it does come down to dice rolls though uh, grenade launchers are a little bit more reliant on the good specular fire rolls than you know you rely on good rolls for face to face rolls with the active turn combi rifles and HMGs for example here's a bit, a bit of a better view of his deployment he's got a hacker here on the left uh, prone on the building with a, a fusilier and a um, orc spot link um, orc spot team auxilia team over here got the pathfinders and uh, flashbulb bot uh, the typical NIS HMG one of my opponent's favorite choices on his right hand side he's got the TR bot he's got another fusilier uh, lieutenant option uh, engineer and doctor bulleteer as I mentioned pathfinder and the uh, the doctor's helper bot over here uh, or the engineer's uh, helper bot on my side um, I've got a Hessian with HMG and my deployment of the CN warrior is a mistake actually I'm deploying second so I deployed uh, not prone I'm just hanging up behind this blue box and the Sien Warrior does have line of sight over to his bulleteer which is just poking up beyond cover but I made the mistake of realizing that he actually barely had a sliver of line of sight from the other side of the building to the HM, uh, the, the Sien HMG with his TR bot so that was just a, a blunder from me so that's something I'm having to deal with at the start of the game again the overview you've already seen this photo you can see the um, the, the two consoles here and here represented by the little uh, MDF circles so he begins with his Krakow Renegade which is rolled uh, plus one armor so not really the ideal option he was really hoping for super jump or climbing plus but ends up with just the the low roll with the armor option uh, further over here the Sien Warrior has been shot at by his TR bot and takes a wound it drops prone and uh, this unfortunately does not allow me to avoid the bulleteer later on so now the bulleteer can move forward and the plan really was to you know have a shootout against the bulleteer that I could potentially win and then after I took a wound just fail guts and go back uh, into cover over here 
So I can't remember what the game situation actually was when I lost this first wound. I know I went prone. Ah, uh, yeah, so he, he attacked me with the... I think with the bullet here first, and then I went prone in this position, and then he moved the TR bot to attack me. I can't quite remember the sequence of events now that I, I try to recall it. Um, I remember taking one wound initially and not dying. So I probably could have gone to the right and then dropped prone out of the line of sight of everybody, but I chose not to. Ah, yeah, I chose not to, because dropping prone and giving me a little bit of line of sight outside of the box was allowing me to see his bullet here, but that was a mistake. In fact, the deployment wasn't as much of a blunder as me choosing not to go into total cover here. So that, that was just really a mistake. So here's the bullet here. You can see the bullet here is just the line of sight is just poking out beyond this box and able to see through there to shoot at the um, the Sien H and G. And this TR bot is, is the is the other uh, model attacking me from the other side of the building with enhanced fire added from the hacker. Krakow Renegade now on the other side of the table, moving past the uh, the Guilung, which is in camera mode and uh, eventually moves up to the ladder here, and his plan is to move over here and start attacking the Yan Huo and the Flash Pulse Bot and the Quang Shi. So he's got a submachine gun and a chest mine, so he should be able to do some damage. What happens though is when, once he moves up to about this point, we realize that the Yan Huo uh, can see him as he climbs over the ladder, and the Yan Huo is armed with a pistol. So being a heavy infantry ballistic skill 14, Pistol plus three range. I'm hitting him on a 17 here. He's got impetuous, no cover or anything. And he can attack back with an SMG. So it's just a one submachine gun. So with that, he's rolling plus three to hit with range, minus three for cover, so he's bliss skill 11. So three dice needing a uh, 11 versus one dice needing a 17. And once he gets close enough, uh, in fact, to this particular point here, um, he loses the face-to-face -face roll. Now, I, I directly rolled a 17 here and got a crit, and that was lucky, but do bear in mind that if I roll a 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, or 17, I win the face-to-face -face roll, and unless he crits, he just has to take a, an armor save against the pistol. He's got no uh, armor plus, uh, except for the actual armor he got from biochemistry. So, uh, rolling a crit's only a 5% chance, but actually beating him in the face-to-face -face roll and then having him face, fail the armor save isn't that unlikely. I mean... I think that my chances of inflicting one wound there would have been at least 20%, if not closer to 40 or 50%. So he is taking a risk coming over here. I thought that he might have moved up and used his uh, chest mine to try and hit several targets, if not all three of them. Having said that though, that certainly would have meant that he died and the Yanhuo would have taken one wound at most. So I, talking to him after the game, I, he said his plan was to, to you know, to take a little bit of a risk here, it's it's a you know low low risk high reward kind of thing. So if if he gets lucky and kills the Yanhuo, it means he can actually dominate the table with the with an SHMG and uh, and also his uh, Montessa Knight with uh, uh, grenade launcher. More importantly, can move out. But if he fails, he loses some orders and loses the Krakot. Now, I think that spending so many orders on the Krakot, not having it survive, really isn't good enough. Um, whereas the chances of him actually killing the Yuan Huo with it weren't really good enough to uh, justify the, the dominance that he would have been in. If I had been in his position, I would have used the Ness HMG to, just to attack because he would have needed 13s on four dice versus my 11 on one dice because of his mimetism. And uh, the chance of hitting me and getting two wounds through probably would have been, been worth it. All right, moving on. So now what he does is he moves around with his uh, TR bot and actually gets lined to the Sien Warrior. And this is the blunder that I was talking about earlier. I thought I was being clever by just going prone and staying in a position where I could keep shooting at his Spitfire, knowing that his Spitfire was less likely to, to take me out. And uh, the TR bot at this point does shoot against the, the Sien Warrior and doesn't kill him because I've passed the armor saves, but then runs out of orders in group two with the, with the TR bot. But he's in a pretty good position. By the way, we are playing all of our objectives, not just the consoles, but the tech coffins, as Silhouette 3 markers, which provide cover. So the like, uh, like a sensor bot, like a, an actual remote worth of space on the battlefield. So now he moves up his doctor and uh, hits up one of these tech coffins and presses the button successfully. So that is a button pressed for Pan Oceana. And then 
the bulletier can move forward. And the bulletier, although it initially got lucky actually trying to shoot the Sien Warrior and passing all sorts of armor saves, eventually after enough orders being spent he does destroy it which means that I can't move my doctor over and uh, and repair him so he didn't just take me to zero wounds and unconscious he removed me from the table which was the correct play he really needed to do that so we end his turn with the bulleteer and the TR bot just facing around this flank and I haven't really got any uh, you know firepower to deal with them so in my turn, um, the Shaolin Monk moving over to the side of the building, unfortunately the 4 inches with Impetuous does take it out here so it gets shot. I decided to make the decision not to make a special dodge, I threw the smoke grenade over here instead. And the reasoning behind that is that it saves this Shaolin Monk and this Quang Shi from actually moving up and getting shot as well, which would have you know caused me to lose more orders later. So I'm okay to lose one trooper that's worth five points in uh, in the interest of saving these guys' lives. So the smoke goes goes down and he, he gets shot predictably. As you can see here, the photo afterwards, uh, this is where we end up. So we've got one Quang Shi moving out to, out to here into the smoke and the Shaolin moving out here. But he can use his impetuous order to pull back, which is quite important for saving him. This guy moves up over here, which is fine. So now, um, because he couldn't actually spend any of his orders on the Montessa Knight at all, because if he had, he'd have, he'd have gotten shot at. Now I can move out in my active turn and actually fire two missiles at him because I'm using you know the non-neurocinetics version of the Yanhuo. So two missiles and inning 17s against his dodge. He gets hit by one of the missiles and fails two armor saves and goes unconscious. So that was the success. So I think you can appreciate here, guys, that for him to have used the Nis HMG would have been better. I think that if he had done that. I mean, I stood a pretty good chance of, like, surviving long enough where I either take one wound or two wounds and go unconscious, and then sort of just get gutsed back behind the cover or something like that. Uh, I think I would have been okay, to be honest. But, I mean, if he had done that, what I would have done is um, survive the armor roll, and then move the Anhuo two inches back towards the corner of this photo here, but still in a position where it can actually fire the missile launcher like to this spot here as the Montessa moves forward, forcing the Montessa to fire the grenade launcher at a longer range, giving me a better chance of surviving. So there is that. Also, I mean, sure, he could have he could have failed the face-to-face -face roll with a Ness if I'd rolled like a, a really good dice. So now, given it's my first turn, the Yanwo is in a group two with like four orders. Uh, the Tiger Soldier shows up, and the only model I've lost in group one is the Sien. So I started with 10, uh, including the Tiger, and lost one. So this guy gets effectively 9 orders to, to, to rip through. My opponent has forgotten about the airborne deployment. Bear in mind that this mission does say that you can't use levels 1 and 2 of air, airborne deployment. Only levels 3, 4, and 5. Sorry. You can use 1 and 2, just not 3 and above. Um, so that does allow you to actually deploy on the side of the table, which is what's happening here. So he's just moving forward, and he's just shooting one guy at a time. So there's the auxilia over here. We've got a uh, Contestamento regular. There's a Pathfinder remote here. And the, the, the tiger just goes to work. He's moving around the corner, just uh, shooting people, knocking people unconscious. There's also a, um, there was a Pelbot further over there where the Montessa Knight was, getting ready to revive him, but the uh, Tiger has shot him as well. Eventually moving around the side here, failing to kill the, the, the Flash Pulse bot. And the last um, order of the day basically is to shoot over the Flash Pulse bot into the Engineer over here, which does take him out. And then the Tiger Soldier gets burnt by the Auxilia uh, Orc spot and the Flash Pulse bot here pinging him with the, the flash pulse. So, managed to kill, I think, five guys through all of that. Uh, so, w well worth it. I mean, if even if you're spending seven or eight orders on the tiger to take out five guys, it means that he's got two more turns left, and they're very important turns, and he's down that many orders to complete it, and I've only lost one order on my side. So, definitely, definitely a good run from the tiger. Here he is here. Okay. I still have, I think, three orders in group two. So the ninja spends his own order. You saw where it was deployed earlier when I took the photo of the hidden deployment. So just moving out here, the bots declare a hold. The doctor tries to discover me but fails. So the ninja is able to move past them and get to a point where it can actually position itself here. And notice that we said that this objective uh, is a silhouette three. So the ninja just has to go prone here and it can't be seen by the bulleteer, only by the TR bot. So we eventually move over to here, it's prone, it's not touching the spot, and then it can just move in and attack. 
Now, if the TR bot shoots, it's at minus six for surprise attack, minus six for TO camo, minus three for uh, martial arts, minus three for range. So it's minus 18, which it can't be because it caps at negative 12, but it's blister skill being 11, it just can't hit me. So it has to use its uh, electric pulse or an unarmed, unarmed attack. With electric pulse, I have to roll above a 7 to, to beat it, and that was what I was attempting to do. If I don't, I get hit um, by the pulse and I go into immobilization level 2. Now I thought that the martial arts, uh, sorry, the close combat value of 23 gives me plus 3, and I think that still is the case, but either way, it was it was a bit of a risk here for me, and I, I think in hindsight I should have actually sh I'd done something else just based on the possible outcomes and evaluating them and anal analyzing them. But I rolled a three, I got immobilized, and that's for two turns, so it was actually quite severe. So not only do I fail to take out quite an important target, but I lose the ninja in the process. So with me having an advantage going into that turn, it's now sort of swung back a little bit because I'm losing an important specialist without really gaining anything for it. So here we are, ninja is immobilized. Now in his turn, um, he's forgotten that uh, when the ninja activated, he could have hacked me because the ninja's a killer hacker and there was a repeater nearby. So he forgot to use the his own hacker as an ARO. But when it turns back to his turn, he realizes the situation and uses the hacker to brain blast the ninja, knowing that the ninja can't use his killer hacker device back because it's in close combat. Um, now we looked up the rules for immobilized and apparently I am allowed to reset as a response. So he spends four orders or even five orders trying to brain blast me and fails every single time, either by not rolling uh, below 12 for a 12 or below for the whip, or getting beaten by the reset roll, or for me just passing the BTS save. So he got really unlucky here to not kill the ninja. So in fact, the problem is that the ninja is still active and um, he can't really shoot at it, otherwise he loses his own TR bot. Also, shooting into close combat with his bulletier means that he's at minus 12, so he'd actually have to uh, roll really well to kill it, or move to the right range band, or, or come up with some alternative plan. In this photograph, we're having a look at the, the laser, and it's, it's kind of refracted a bit on the building here, but my opponent is deciding whether to move um, out and engage the Yan Huo at this point. He can't quite cross the, the roof of this building with his Niss, otherwise he does run, run into range. So what he decides to do is uh, take the long way around and actually go prone with the Niss, crawl across the building, and then stand up at a point where the Yan Huo doesn't get line of sight. So you can see here is the Niss. He's got to cross the building here, then stand up on the corner, and the close combat uh, raging over here, well, not a close combat given the ninja's immobilized, is down the back. But because he's used all of his orders in group two, he can't even move out of close combat with the... the the TR bot, so he's kind of made a bit of a blunder there. We talked about this after the game and realized that if he had just, you know, used his first order to move the TR bot out and then attack with the, the Brain Blast, and if that didn't work, then just shoot him with a Nis later on, or at least move the TR bot to safety where, you know, even if the ninja survived, the ninja couldn't just kill the TR bot immediately or attempt to again with trying to beat the flashballs, but... Ugh. All right, so with that having been done, um, he decides not to actually shoot the, 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 the ninja, he just leaves the, the Niss there to shoot at the ninja in an arrow, but moves through with the bulletier. His plan with the bulletier is to try and take out the Kaisatsu and the Shaolin and a couple of my Kuangshi. So moving out here, he eventually gets to this point, and my opponent decides to split his burst, one shot against the, the monk, two shots against the Kaisatsu and suppression fire, and one shot against a random Kuangshi further over the table here. I, I prefer to I prefer to be a bit concentrated in these sort of situations. He chose to split burst, but I prefer to just try and shoot the most important target, which I think is the specialist. So he allocates two to the Kai Skotsu and one to the, the smoke grenade guy and one to the the uh to the to the Quang Shi. But doesn't get any kills. He gets one hit on the, the, the Kai Sotsu who luckily passes his armor save. And then the smoke goes off because it rolls better than the, the bulletier does. And then the Quangshi gets a crit dodge. So, very unfortunate bulletier. There's the smoke and the outcome of that, that, that order and that, react, that interaction. So there we have it. The Ness moves over after all and stands up. And uh, now when I move out with the, the Quangshi, 
the Nis can actually shoot at it as it pulls across to attack the bullet here. But hey, I've got Dogged, so in my following turn, the Quangxi is able to move out and put his chain rifle down on it. So that's the spot here, so he's, she's shooting down this alleyway, the, the chain rifle comes in, this is the clear, clearly the closest model for Impetuous. He does survive, though, passing his armor save against the chain rifle, and shoots this guy to death. Then uh, the Shaolin Monk moving up with the chain rifle, and he decides to dodge, in actual fact, and shoot at him again with the, the Nynis as well. So the Nynis does put a wound on the Shaolin Monk, but the chain rifle does succeed this time, uh, putting the bot into unconscious state. So now, um, I'm free to move the Yanhuo up, and he's given me a target. Initially he was outside of line of sight, but the Yanhuo steps up into this building and moves across the wall and shoots at him. Now I didn't benefit from cover, so it would have taken me another couple of orders to get into cover. But uh, with two dice needing 11s against his one dice needing a 16, uh, he really had to roll in that mid medium range to be able to stop me here. Luckily for me, I managed to get one missile through, and of course that was more than enough to destroy the Nis. If I'd failed that, I mean, I've still got armor 5 and, and 2 wounds. The next turn moves me up to the cover, hopefully surviving again, and from that point onward it's 11s versus 13s uh, on one dice, so a better, a better opportunity. I suppose I could have also tried moving up the Guilang, but it might not have been within 16 inches between those two buildings. So now just to be really obnoxious, the Yanhuo, still with two wounds mind you, moves on top of this crate, not worrying about cover because he's got no heavy weapons left, and um, I can actually see a lot of the battlefield now standing on top of this, this box which is on top of a building. And the reason this is so important is that he's only got one turn left and he's got to move guys onto the objective. So even though I'm going first, because I've got such a powerful ARO piece, so to speak, and he's lost a lot of his threats, which can deal with it, his third turn's going to be very difficult indeed. And now, um, I'm moving forward with the Celestial Guard Quagshi control device, and he basically moves to the edge of the building, climbs down, and moves all the way over to the bot. And this time, now that I've got two guys, the odds of me winning are much better. To beat a Flash Pulse, as in to roll higher than a 7, but equal to or less than my close combat score of 14 with this guy, with two dice is a bit better. And if that fails, the ninja can have a go at it. So, uh, luckily I do manage to win this time and destroy the, the, the TR bot, so I've got uh, room for the ninja to actually move out now. Um, obviously kill the doctor here in close combat, moving out like this. Realizing again that um, moving this far puts me in range of yet another repeater, so he has another go at me with the, uh, the hacker with his brain blast and still doesn't destroy the ninja, so he's been un unlucky with that hacker. The ninja uh, eventually managed to kill the doctor, but uh, yeah, I really should have lost the ninja by now, he's really got nine lives like a cat. Guilang just uh, pulling a little bit closer to the corner of the building, and uh, Celestial Guard with combi rifle just setting up suppression fire behind the objective at base to base with it, because again, remember guys, it counts as cover. The ninja has actually pressed the button, so I have claimed one of the consoles. So now, um, he shoots at me with his lieutenant, this is the last turn, so lieutenant orders okay, it doesn't really matter about loss, loss of lieutenant because he can't, there's no more turns after this. So shoots the ninja who gets a crit dodge, the ninja just the most agile thing in the world, just avoiding every, every attempt to kill him, and moves uh, dodges prone back behind the cover. So at this point my opponent, uh, feeling like he has, has lost, is going to just try a really desperate move, which is to coordinate uh, four guys to try and uh, incap incapacitate the the Yan Huo. I'm not sure if you can see him, but uh, if I move this down here, actually, no, I can't. The photo won't let me. The Yan Huo is up in this corner here, and he stands up with his guys here. The problem, though, is that this model here, even if it wins the face-to-face -face roll against the Yan Huo. As the missile comes flying over and lands, all I've got to do is pass a 14 and the explosion will actually catch this auxiliar as well. So even if he wins the face-to-face -face roll, everybody else um, gets hit by the, the impact template because it goes down if you if you pass the ballista skill uh, roll. So he flash pulses me, shoots me with the uh, assault hacker, with the hacker here, uh, and also shoots me with the fusilia. His uh, repeater bot moves a bit closer uh, on the other side of the table, and the Yanhuo does indeed fire the missile, um, blowing up this guy over here. Uh, in fact, it does blow up this guy as well, because I beat him in the face-to-face -face roll. The hacker shoots me, inflicting a wound, a flash pulse bot hits me as well, fail the guts check, moving back. 
moves up with the Pathfinder here, shoots at the Celestial Guard, which manages to win the face-to-face -face roll. And luckily for him, it's pretty much even odds. I mean, even with Enhanced Fire there, I mean, I'm hitting on, what, 11s or 8s. He's meaning also, I think, 8s because of cover and suppression fire. Or even 11s if he's got Enhanced Fire. But I don't think he got to uh, casting Enhanced Fire after all of that. And then it's just a matter of the Guilang beating off the spot which he's put in the way, shooting it after three orders, managed to kill it, and uh, moving the troops onto the uh, the consoles. But don't forget that with the Guilang here and the ninja on the other main objective, he's still able to use Intel Com. Um, so that's why I have to move two specialists onto each of these green markers, because Intel Com will make them count, make one of them count as a non-specialist. So that's why you need two of them to have at least one guy controlling. If you guys follow that. So it was an interesting game, um, I really enjoyed it. Um, the Yan Ho, I wasn't expecting him to be quite as useful, although I suspected he was capable of that. So he's quite a fun choice, I'm not sure if I'll run him much in the future, but um, you never know, he's quite a cool model as well. Uh, so what can we learn from this game? Pretty poor deployment by the Sien Warrior. I think that he really should have had more to do with that game. I'm happy with my choice of table side. This is a list which can win uh, these kinds of scenarios, uh, where, whether it goes first or second, which is very, very good. I quite like that about list design. I'm going to try and build lists to be better at winning with first turn and second turn. I think that's quite a big deal. Um, scenario is fine. I think it's. I think it's all right. My opponent made some mistakes, and uh, I did get. I did get lucky with surviving. You know that turn two with a ninja. I got unlucky. You know fa failing the attempt to kill his bot. But I shouldn't have attacked it like that. I should have fired the bow first, right? Because the bow is hitting on a fourteen double action, and he's. He can't hit. He can only dodge, right? He can. He's. He's at minus. Twelve which you, you can't hit with the HMG, so 14 to hit with a bow, and if he dodges, he's at minus 6, because t uh, bots are minus 3, and uh, it's minus 3 for surprise shots, so the bow would have been better, and then I can actually move out and attack. I could have also gone to Teo Camo while I was down there, and then, uh, and then move over to attack the Spitfire, because I had enough orders to do it, and the corpse, the wreckage of the bot, would have provided cover. So that's a lesson learned from me. So next time I'll, I'll play that a little bit better. Uh, but yeah, quite quite useful to use my Yan Huo as a, as a deployment model, because he wasn't expecting me to use arrow pieces. I don't really do that much of a player, so his Montessa Knight was caught out by that, so I quite like that. Hope you guys like that too. And uh, we even had the Kaisotsu at the end of the game getting, uh, getting a, a piece of the action. I'll just take the camera out of the way. Uh, with the, uh, the Tech Coffin. So thanks for watching guys as usual, we'll see you on the next bat rep.